The following program contains shocking expressions of free speech. If you suffer from being tongue-tied, ankyloglossia, Randall might not be right for you. Check with your romper room teacher. Standing for truth in the four corners of America. Fighting for justice on the frontiers of the culture wars. And turning resistance into an art form. The only TV host arrested more times than Mahatma Gandhi, Randall Terry. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the nation's number one Tea Party television show. It is I, your servant, Randall Terry. We are beginning day number three of college-level instruction on leadership. If you missed any of this series and you like what you see in tonight's program, go online and watch the rest of this. I promise you, you will be blessed if you really and truly want to be a leader. All right, I'm gonna take a quick comedic break with a profound word from one of my profound friends, and then we'll go on with my profound lesson in, in an exquisite display of profundity. <laughs> Listen here, I heard that people living up in Boston watching that game, while wow, they saw a quarterback's throw a ball better than Tim Tebow did. Now, I'm serious. Mr. Randall Terry showed his presidential ads there during that game. And the people in Boston had to watch that, the truth of child killing. Tim Tebow's doing an awesome job. But Mr. Randall Terry, can you imagine that? He's helping us focus on the big stuff. Welcome to the show, friend. Before we continue on with my college level well, what do we call it? Discussion, education, presentation to a leadership class in Metro College in Denver, Colorado. A quick word about Mitt Romney. You can, in fact, have overwhelming numbers of money, that is, and you can overwhelm your opposition, crush him economically, like Romney did against Newt Gingrich. But sooner or later, you have to show some content. And that is why Rick Santorum is surging upward, and Romney is just staying right at that Romney ceiling. If Rick Santorum beats Romney in Michigan, the home state of Romney's dad, where his dad was governor, the Romney campaign could be all but over. It just depends on the leadership Romney shows in fundraising. And now to Leadership 301 at Metro State College with yours truly. I don't, I don't need you for my show. If you want, like if you want your question to be on, we'll put it on. I'm not afraid of any confl conflict or debate, none of that, it doesn't bother me. So when you ask your question, say, I'd like this on camera or I would not like this on camera and we will honor it immediately. Oh, is that fair? Yeah. All right, sir, on camera or off? On camera, why not? <laughs> um, you were quoted, you know, um, saying <clears throat> that uh, um, concerning a 2009 incident uh, concerning Dr. Tiller's murder, you, were, you made a comment saying that um, he reaped what he sowed. Now, being a leader and talking about leadership and whatnot, do you think that that's the right behavior and attitude of a leader to be promoting violence? Because in essence, in essence, I mean, if anyone were just to cut that out, you know, and just see what you said, you know, reap what you sow, you know, they would just say that, okay, you know, you're advocating violence. Good question, very good, and I've taken a lot of heat for that. Um, first of all, I do not advocate violence. Uh, I'll give you the framework of how that, because in the media world there are things called sound bites. I could talk for five minutes to a journalist and they could cut something right out of the middle and run with it and I have to live with it. Remember the movie with Tom Hanks and uh, what's her name, the book movie? What was it? No, the love story. You've got mail, where he gives this long interview, and then the only sound clip is, we sell books, we sell them cheap, so, you know, <laughs> and then he falls off of the, anyway, I will contend, and I will go to my grave contending, that what I did in that moment was the most critical um, split-second leadership decision that any pro-life leader in the nation made. I'm not here to convert you to being pro-life. I hope you are. If you're not today, I hope you become it. But I'm going to explain exactly what happened. <clears throat> and you can take the essence of this principle and run with it in leadership. 
in whatever field it is that you're fighting, you have a, a core set of principles. You have an, an axiom. You have, so, you have a, a fortress of first principles, arcs axiom, that you must not surrender, that you cannot surrender. Because if you do, then you're done. Vichy government occupied France. We'll let the Germans be here. We won't let the Allies land their aircraft. Then you got the fighting France, occupied France. The Vichy government, they were the bad guys. They were collaborators. And they, many of them were tried after the war. Free France, De Gaulle, all of this, they were part of the resistance. So you're going to have situations where you've got to choose what side am I on, what's my fortress of first principles, where I will not surrender. As a pro-life leader, our position is very simple. That human life begins at conception, goes to birth. And it goes to natural death. But these are human beings in the mother's womb. To kill them is homicide, it's murder, whatever you want to call it. It's to take an innocent human life. When, when Tiller was shot, the pro-life movement were running like frightened schoolgirls, the leaders, falling over themselves. We don't support violence. This is horrible. We're, we're, this is not us. And I was watching the news the minute that it happened, because my press conference was the next day. I'm watching the news, and the, the talking heads that now grace our horizon morning, noon, and night on Fox, CNN, and MSNBC, they were starting to say stuff like, see, pro-lifers don't really believe that it's a baby. Look at the way they're backpedaling so fast. They're doing a gut check. They're doing a reality check right now. They don't really believe this is a baby. So I looked at my staff, to my friends, and I said, listen closely to me. This one incident, which was deplorable, was horrifying. This one incident has more possibility to set us back 10 years than anything that has happened. Because we cannot surrender our arcs axiom our fortress of first principles, that this is a human life. So what I said was, a killer got killed. And there is a passage that I know you've all heard, you reap what you sow. And so I said that in the context. This is a man who openly spoke of killing 60,000 human fetuses, okay? That's a lot of bloodshed. And had his own crematorium. I mean, this, is, this was a dark soul. He would kill babies, and then he would dress them up in baptize them in little clothing outfits. It was just it was bizarre. So I said to my staff, I said, we are not going to flinch. I'm going to hold a press conference at the press club. All the national press showed up. And, we're, and I'm going to say, what Scott Roeder did was not right. And that's where they clip it out. But Tiller reaped what he sowed. The best that we can say is the killer was killed. And I said, I grieve for him that he didn't have a chance to prepare himself to face God. He deserved to be tried. At least you're honest. Yeah, and I'm consistent. Yeah. And, I, and I felt that my duty as a leader was not, to not allow them to turn this man into the patron saint of that which I'm fighting against. And that was what the path they were on. Well, I have to admit, it was fun being with all of those college students. Man, I love teaching the college. Maybe that's what I'll do when I grow up. I gotta take a break and, and put in a, a job application at a college. Don't go away. President Obama is the first case of polio since the widespread use of the Sabin and Salk vaccines. Infantile paralysis. Hi, Joe Costello here, founder of Kylea Health and Energy. I've been making superb nutritional supplements for over 15 years, and from day one, I've partnered with Randall Terry, helping to fund his invaluable work in reclaiming our country's biblical and godly roots. I want to share with you a product that has changed hundreds of thousands of lives since its inception. Introducing the Total Living Drinks, Greens and Berry, the ultimate superfood formulas that provide you the nine essential areas of nutrition your body needs on a daily basis. Each serving of the Total Living Drink provides the life-giving phytonutrients that come from the equivalent of five servings of organic vegetables and berries, enzymes for better digestion and nutrient absorption, protein for building lean muscle mass so you can burn more fat for fuel, probiotics for better intestinal function, herbs for building energy and stamina, antioxidants for maximum immune function and disease prevention and all the vitamins and minerals you need for slowing down aging and maximum health. 
you would have to take 30 to 40 capsules each day and spend almost $10 a day to match the over 30,000 milligrams of total nutrition in each scoop of the Total Living Drink. Order right now and get started on the amazing Total Living Drink. They come in two delicious flavors, Total Living Drink Greens and Total Living Drink Berry. And every single dollar we receive, we give a generous amount to Randall Terry's organization to help further his work and further the kingdom. Visit us online at the address on your screen and receive an online discount or call the toll-free number. Call today, and for the daily price of a latte, you can get back on the road to better health and energy with Kylea's Total Living Drink. talking about Randall Terry. He's the only one around here who knows about love. Come on now. <laughs> I cracked me up. <laughs> that wasn't even funny. Why are you laughing? Here, here am I. To make him the patron saint. And I said, I'm not going to let that happen on my watch. So they immediately took down his website which had all these pictures of little dead babies in white outfits being baptized. And, it was, and I said, because there's these time machines where you can go back and pull up websites. I told my staff, find the websites, put them back up, and we will send out press releases. The first server that we had it on took it down within 30 minutes. I said, find another server. Find one in a foreign country. I don't care. This is leadership, okay? and put it up again, put it on two servers so that if they rip one down, we've still got a redundant protection and they finally gave up. And what we did, because I wouldn't surrender my arcs axiom, was we prohibited George Tiller from becoming the patron saint of abortionists. And by us putting out his website and by us saying the truth, the media backed off as fast as they could. Remember how fast the news cycle was? 24 hours, it came and went. And they could never get traction again to lionize him. And I contend that it was because of my leadership at that moment that I made a strategic choice and I knew I would catch hell for it. I had so many pro-lifers. Forget people who don't agree with me. I had pro-lifers saying, are you out of your mind? You give us a bad name, you support violence. I said, read my press release. I didn't condone what Scott Roeder did but I was not gonna let the babies be dehumanized in that moment of time and allow that man to become a hero. So I made a decision, it was leadership, and I took the heat. And you better be prepared to take heat. Good question. Thank you. You're welcome. Next question. On anything about leadership, we don't have to talk about the politics of, of me. This one, I had a question. Oh, on camera. You want on or off camera? You want to be a TV star, man? This is your chance. Si usted quiere estar en la televisión, ahora es el momento. You were talking about like, uh, like back in the days, uh, you know, like, you know, the movies and stuff. A lot of the leaders are on, um, like, in the front line. I wonder how, in a political science, how you do that. You know, like, how are you in the front line, like, doing a lot of, the, like, taking a lot of the heat? And look at the difference between Gingrich and Romney right now. Romney can't decide if he likes Wendy's French fries or, burgers, or Burger King French fries. I'm quoting from a friend of mine who said, Romney can't decide if he likes Burger King or Wendy's, but Newt talks as if he got a text from God. <laughs> In other words, Newt stands right there and takes it on the chin for what he believes. And Romney keeps equivocating. When, you, when Romney's done, are you really sure what he just said? You know what Newt said. So, did, was your question an example of somebody who's doing it? Yeah, okay. Ron Paul, man, Ron Paul's the best. Ron Paul, when it comes down to consistency and not flinching on the current political horizon, perhaps with yours truly is an exception, at least in this one small field, Ron Paul doesn't flinch. Ron Paul says it exactly like it is, and you can walk away knowing exactly what that man believes. You may not agree with him, but you know where he stands. Romney, you're not sure. He gets asked a yes, no question, and 60 seconds later, he never said yes or no. 
Next question. Camera or on camera? Camera's fine. Um, how do you think that religion plays into politics? Because we have Newt in the race right now. <coughs> he says, you know, he says what he doesn't preach sort of thing. And then we have Romney, who we have a Mormon, and we have Mormon commercials every two seconds, you know, <laughs> forcing Mormon on us. And then, um, you know, I'm not sure what your beliefs are, um, but I'm sure you're some sort of Christian by the way that you talk. Actually, I'm kind of a cross between a Mormon and a Muslim because I wanted that multiple wife thing. <laughs> <laughs> Are you available? <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> I'm joking, by the way. Um, how do you think, I mean, you stand before us and you are preaching leadership and a lot of things that have to do with politics, but you use a lot of religion. Mm -hmm. if, I mean, I'm a believer, but what if people aren't? How do they get the same message? I love this question. Can I... Can I be like a guy who's in class and take my coat off? Sure. All right. For those of you watching on television, I'm about to take off my coat. Can I ask another part of your question? Anything? Sure. We stop with this coat. <laughs> yes, exactly. We're not going any further. And the crowd breathe a deep sigh of relief. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do we as leaders decide when to use religion and when not to? I'm going to give you as, most, uh, uh, as concise an answer as I can that is at once political, ethical, and somewhat theological, but for sure about leadership, okay? The question is, what role does religion play in politics? And we as leaders, when do we use, if we do, religion to right. motivate people? And she asked, what am I? I'm a Bible-believing, born-again, tongue-talking, evangelical who believes in the supremacy of the Petrine chair. Anybody here know what that means? <laughs> I'm Catholic. <laughs> I converted to the Catholic Church about five years ago. My undergraduate work, some of it is in Protestant theology. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, there's a lot of Catholic Democrats. Yeah, I mean, there's probably more Catholics who are culturally Democrat than they are Republican. But that's because of the labor movement. There's a history there. Anyway, to come back to the, um, to the question. There's nothing new under the sun, ethically, all right? In poli-sci, your goal, if you're, in, if you're in the political realm, your goal is policy. I again want to thank the professor for the privilege of being with him in that class with these young people. I hope that you're enjoying leadership, I think it was 301 at Metro State College in Denver, Colorado. Be right back with another segment after this break. In our country, we don't get to vote for laws. We vote for lawmakers who make laws in our name and in our stead. And so if Obama says that he's going to keep killing babies and you support him, then you have participated in the shedding of innocent blood by extension. It is a crime. Hi, Joe Costello here, founder of Kylea Health and Energy. I want to share with you a product that has changed hundreds of thousands of lives. Introducing the Total Living Drinks, Greens and Berry, the ultimate superfood formulas that provide you the nine daily essential areas of nutrition your body needs. Each scoop provides the life-giving phytonutrients that come from the equivalent of five servings of organic vegetables and berries, probiotics for better intestinal function, antioxidants for disease prevention, and vitamins and minerals for establishing maximum health. Order now and get started on the Total Living Drink. When you do, a generous gift will go to Randall Terry's organization to help further his work and further the kingdom. Order online and receive an online discount or call the toll-free number. Call today and enjoy maximum health and energy. Courage is rightly esteemed the first of human qualities because it is the quality which guarantees all others. Sir Winston Churchill. Who says that you can't be a great leader and be good looking? Leadership 301 continues. Okay, policy. We want this law. We want this government agency to do this. Or we want this law and we want to stop this government agency from doing this. The end of the matter is not simply the retention of power, 
but the projection of a philosophy, a political governing philosophy, that has policy, legislative ends. So, you with me still? You only have a handful of players on the horizon, philosophically speaking. You've got Karl Marx, all right, which has a, his philosophy of the nature of man, of the paradigm of conflict, and then the new item comes out. You have his philosophy about the history of the world being a history of class warfare, and that the purpose of the seizure of the reins of power is the redistribution of wealth, to get the, to, to get the means of production into the hands of the people and out of the hands of an elite. Okay? That's the philosopher of that then you must have a corresponding political leader who wants to implement that, implement that philosophy into policy. So you look, here's Karl Marx, the philosopher, and here are his best disciples, Vladimir Lenin, Mao Zedong, Joseph Stalin. The leaders of the French Revolution were his predecessors, but he stole a lot of his ideas from the French Revolution. Um, so. These people will stand over here and say, I believe in what Karl Marx said. He's my philosopher. He's my guiding light. And here are our political leaders. And you can look in the, you know, the Americas and look at who has flirted with communism at one level or socialism. I mean, socialism is communism on the half shell. We still believe in, we don't take all money when you die, but we have a death tax. We don't really take your house, but we even force you to have a land tax. So if you don't pay your rent to the government, you lose your home. We have a graduated income tax, which is what Karl Marx called for. You know, every child, the child of the state. Well, not exactly, but we'll have mandatory education. If you don't educate your child in the way we want, we'll take your kid. So you have hardcore communism, but then you have socialism, which really is communism on the half shell. It's just, it's communism with a happy face. And we let you keep the deed to your house, even though if you don't give us the money, we're taking it. <clears throat> then you have Nietzsche and Darwin. Let's create a superhuman race. Let's get rid of human weeds. It gave birth to the eugenics movement, which gave birth to Nazism, right. So you have your philosophy, your, your philosophical guiding lights, and then you have your corresponding political leader who has policy objectives. And those policy objectives resulted in what we know now to be the Holocaust, World War II, stuff that happened to Jews, gypsies, Christians in Germany. You have and I, and I, if somebody help me to give, to, to have a guiding light for, for atheistic libertarianism. You know, I don't know if you want to pick Voltaire, Robespierre. You probably have to have something out of the French Revolution because so much of it has to do with personal liberty and license to do whatever you want. But without a name that I'm going to demand that we hold to, you have your corresponding policy initiatives, which is everyone gets to keep whatever they make, everyone wants kids to do whatever they want, you want to take drugs, you want to be a prostitute, whatever you want, do it. You got your philosophical guiding light, and then you have your Ron Pauls, right, who are trying to implement policy. I make no bones, I make no apologies that my guiding lights are Moses and Jesus, okay? Judeo-Christian philosophy, what we call Western civilization, does not exist without Moses and Christ, without the Ten Commandments and the Sermon on the Mount, baby. So, is this my good side? Is this my good side? Every leader has a good side. I'll be right back with the good side of George Washington with one of his phenomenal quotes. Don't go away. They sacrificed their sons and their daughters to the demons. They poured out innocent blood, the blood of their sons and daughters, whom they sacrificed to the idols of Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Hi, Joe Castello here, founder of Kylea Health and Energy. I want to share with you a product that has changed hundreds of thousands of lives. Introducing the Total Living Drinks, Greens and Berry, the ultimate superfood formulas that provide you the nine daily essential areas of nutrition your body needs. 
Each scoop provides the life-giving phytonutrients that come from the equivalent of five servings of organic vegetables and berries, probiotics for better intestinal function, antioxidants for disease prevention, and vitamins and minerals for establishing maximum health. Order now and get started on the Total Living Drink. When you do, a generous gift will go to Randall Terry's organization to help further his work and further the kingdom. Order online and receive an online discount or call the toll-free number. Call today and enjoy maximum health and energy. George Washington said, I can bear to hear of imputed or real errors. The man who wishes to stand well in the opinion of others must do this because he is thereby enabled to correct his faults or remove prejudices which are, which are imbibed against him. Basically, Washington is saying this, if you want to be a leader, you have to be able to take criticism. Sometimes your critics are right and you can become a better person when you hear what they have to say. Sometimes they're wrong and you, by listening and then correcting the error, get to straighten out some rumor, some lie that's being passed around about you. All right? Don't fret when you're brought under scrutiny. Have the courage to listen and then either mend your ways or correct the lie that's being told about you. God bless you.